What is going on? If you clicked on this video because you're trying to figure out what cell camera to buy without breaking the bank, you're in the right place. This last season, I tested every single cellular trail camera that's under $150, and I'm gonna share all of those results with you today. Really quickly, if you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe and like this video. It helps me out tremendously and it allows me to make more videos just like this one. For those of you that are looking to get your very first cellular trail camera and are brand new to them, cell cams are the top scouting tool available to us hunters, second only to a good pair of hiking boots and some sweat equity. Utilized properly, you can have real-time intel of exactly what's happening in the deer woods sent directly to your cell phone or laptop. Traditional trail cameras are great overall, but if you're not seeing when your target buck is daylighting in your little honey hole until two weeks after he's changed his patterns, you're gonna miss out on a lot of opportunities. With cell cameras, you can have all of that information without stepping foot into the woods, without pressuring your property, and without the risk of bumping that mature buck off your property altogether. You will have the ability to make very targeted strikes and put yourself in very high odd situations. So now let's take a look at each one of these cameras. I'm gonna go through them in no specific orders and I'll link to all of these down below in the description. So the first one is the tech Tacticam Reveal X. I was really, really excited to get my hands on this one after all the noise that Tacticam made last year with the original reveal. This thing is right around $120. It has a 24 megapixel camera. It also has HD video. It has a sub half second trigger speed and a 96 foot low glow infrared flash. The second one right next to the Reveal X is the Reveal XB. And this is essentially the same camera, it just has a no glow flash. So the flash is completely invisible to the deer. I wanted to try this one in hopes that less deer would actually be looking at my cameras. Notice the, the really faint glow that most of these cameras have. But this thing comes in right around $150 at the top end of the range. It has a 24 megapixel camera. It also has HD video, a sub half second trigger speed and then an 80 foot flash. But again, it's that invisible flash, that no glow flash. So it's a little bit less than the low glow infrared. So 80 foot compared to 96 foot. Number three is the Muddy Manifest. I've never had a trail camera made by Muddy, but wanted to try this one out. This thing is $120. It has a 16 megapixel camera. There is no video option with this one. And then it has a 0.8 second trigger speed and an 80 foot low glow infrared flash. This tiny little one over here is the Spy Point Link Micro. I've ran these for a number of years now, so I'm pretty familiar with them. They were in my arsenal again this year. But this thing comes in right around $99. It has a 10 megapixel camera. It does not have a video option. This and the Muddy Manifest are the only two out of all of these that do not have video, but it has a half second trigger speed and an 80 foot low glow infrared flash. On the other end of the spectrum down here, a little bit larger camera is the Moultrie Delta. And I've used some of the higher end Moultrie cell cameras in the past, had a good experience. I wanted to try this one because this is their attempt to play in that consumer price point where a lot more hunters can actually afford is $100. It supposedly has a 32 megapixel camera, it has HD video, it has a 0.35 or 0.32 second trigger speed and an 80 foot low glow infrared flash. Back down at this end, is the Stealth Cam Fusion X. From a design standpoint, this is one of my favorites. It's got this tree bark pattern on the front and it's a little bit smaller compared to some of the other ones. So I feel like it blends in a lot better and you have less chance of getting it stolen, less chance of deer spotting your cameras. So this thing is $100, it has a 26 megapixel camera, it has HD video, a 0.4 second trigger speed and an 80 foot low glow infrared flash. Last but certainly not least is the Bushnell Cellucor 20. I've only had one other Bushnell camera in my life and I really liked it, so I was excited to try this one. It's a little bit on the bigger side, just like the Moultrie Delta that, down here, but this thing is $110. It has a 20 megapixel camera, hence the name, the Cellucor 20. It also has HD video. It says just a sub one second trigger speed, which is right around what all the rest are. And then it has an 80 foot low glow infrared flash. So before we jump into the actual pictures, I wanna to touch briefly on the cell plans that are required to actually have these cameras send pictures to your phone. Regardless of which one you choose right now, the plans are so extremely similar that they're just a couple dollars difference between them. It doesn't matter which one it is, they either have a monthly plan or an annual plan. The monthly plan's great if you only plan to run your cameras for three to six months throughout the year. They all come with a pre-activated SIM card. The activation process is very easy. So from that standpoint, it wasn't even a part of my criteria as I evaluated these cameras. It's a level playing field across the board. 
Now what we're going to do is we're gonna dive into the pictures and videos so you can get a first hand look at what these cameras are really like. I'm going to work through these pictures in no particular order again. I'll wrap everything up at the end and let you know which camera is my favorite, which cameras I would buy again, and which ones I would go with if I was just now starting to build out my fleet of cell cams. Once again, all of these are linked down below in the description if you wanna check those out. First up, we have the Tacticam Reveal X. It's $120, 24 megapixel camera, HD video, has a half a second trigger speed and a 96 foot infrared flash. The first thing you'll notice about this picture is it seems to be just a little blurry. This camera was located in a low spot and it always seemed to have some condensation and fog just because of where it was and it was on a trail so this buck is walking at a moderate pace perpendicular to the camera so naturally there's just a little bit of motion blur but still not bad and as you'll see down in the bottom at the information bar you see the battery life moon phase temperature time and date here we have more of a stationary picture really nice buck i actually found this deer shed had him all over all season long and actually had a couple encounters with them throughout the season but nice clear crisp photo this is another good example of how good the camera quality is it's just a sharp picture everything's in focus and overall i'm just very happy with it here's that shed i was talking about it was really cool it was laying right in the middle of my food plot and just after having so many pictures of the same deer was just really, really neat to have that in my own hand and especially being right behind my house. Now we'll take a look at some of the nighttime pictures. Here's this really nice buck, middle of January, full blown blizzard and relatively clear still, although moving night picture and the camera was hung high. Here's another really cool buck walking on the trail. Not a lot of motion blur. I've noticed that a lot of cameras, unless you're at the very, very high end, especially at night, if the deer is moving at a relatively quick pace, there's gonna be some type of blur. So for this to be as sharp as it is, I'm perfectly fine with that. Here's another nighttime picture, another buck that frequented my area. And there's a doe in the background there, it looks like. Just a nice, crisp nighttime picture. And then lastly, here's the picture that I got right before I walked in and picked up that shed. This was the night before, and here you can see the very next day I walked in, checked it out, was able to pick up that guy's antler. Now let's get into some of the video. First thing you'll notice is a lot of that information down below went away. There's that foggy spot on the left side of the frame, but relatively good quality otherwise. Here you see a buck scent check in the air, sniffing, smelling as this doe walks across the trail, dropping some goodies. Then here's that really nice buck, just sniffing around, checking out my camera. This was right after I'd put it out. Just a cool video, really cool buck, sharp tines. Now we'll get into some of the night videos. Here's a young doe going absolutely karate kid on a raccoon trying to back that thing up. Thought it was pretty funny to watch. And then here's a good example of two bucks walking down a trail. All very crisp, very clear. I'm very happy with that. The only disappointment is the information bar going away. As you can see here, the flash is pretty good. Overall, very happy with the Reveal X though. Next up, we have the Tacticam Reveal XB. It's $150, it has a 24 megapixel camera, HD video, has a half a second trigger speed and an 80 foot no glow invisible infrared flash. With specs almost identical to the Reveal X minus the flash, I expected very comparable pictures and videos and it's about the same. You see the same information on the bar below. Very sharp, crisp photos, overall very happy. Here we'll get into some of the night photos. Here's three bucks, they're all looking away. The whole food plot is illuminated and this is with that invisible flash. So it's a little bit less powerful than the infrared flash on the other cameras, but still does very, very well. Now, as far as the video goes, Again, I'm very happy with it. I have no complaints. I mean, that's it's just cool to watch and it's really interesting to observe deer be deer. And instead of just one click of a camera and seeing a picture, you can really see how they interact with each other. There's also audio on all these videos so you can hear them grunting and snorting and wheezing and everything else rattling, hitting horns together, pretty cool. And here you see some nice snowfall as this doe's just wandering around. For the night video, it's still really, really crisp. Even in the snow, that invisible flash does not limit it at all. And that's the reason why I really, really like that camera. Even with the lesser flash, because it's the invisible flash, you can still see everything perfectly fine. I can still see what even that buck is. The one on the right, it's a little bit harder to see, but everything in the middle of the frame is super easy to see. Now we have the Muddy Manifest. This is $120, boasts a 16 megapixel camera, a 0.8 second trigger speed, and an 80 foot infrared flash. 
All right, so now you see the information bar at the bottom it has time, date, temperature, moon phase, and you can actually name the camera. Just overall, I'm not impressed with the picture quality at all. Here's me walking across. This camera is actually on public land. I hung it high up in a tree. Quality was just garbage. Here you can see that buck way in the back. There's a couple other deer in the picture. Not crisp, not clear, nothing's in focus. Just overall not great. Now we have the nighttime pictures. Again, not bad, but not good. A lot of the other cameras performed better. Thought this picture was kind of cool. A little rabbit sitting here with his bedded doe or shed buck. It might actually be a shed buck. In the back here we have a shed buck and then the other one just has one antler still. Not terrible pictures by any means, but the other cameras outperform this all across the board. And lastly, here's a really nice buck standing right in front of the camera and you can still barely tell what he is. Overall, I would not recommend the Muddy Manifest. Now we have the Spy Point Link Micro. It's a hundred dollars, 10 megapixel camera, half a second trigger speed, and an 80 foot infrared flash. We'll start with the daytime photos here. Even though it only advertises a 10 megapixel camera, it's still just as good, if not better than some of the other cameras. And then down below at the information bar, you got date, time, temperature and moon phase. Here we got that really nice wide eight point in the back. Everything's clear, everything's in focus. Here's me walking across, trying to make sure that my camera angle is correct after hanging it 10 feet up in a tree. Just like every camera, unless you buy the top, top end, if deer are full sprint running around, there's gonna be some blur. But even here, this buck, coming in, chasing all these does around. You can still tell what everything is. I'm not really bummed out, and especially at a sub $100 price point. Here you go again, there's a little bit of blur with the doe on the right, but overall, crisp photo, and I'm not mad about that, especially at that price point. Now we'll go to the nighttime pictures. This is a really nice buck that I got on camera quite a few times. There's just a little bit of blur, but not enough to deter me away from this camera. Here's a better example of a slower moving deer. Everything's sharp, everything's in focus. And again, at that price point, I'm super, super satisfied. And that flash illuminates everything all the way to the back of that food plot, which is actually pretty large compared to what it seems just in the picture alone. This was actually the very first First trail camera picture I got after buying this house in Ohio. Very, very nice buck, especially coming from Michigan. I couldn't have been more excited and he actually got killed within a week of this picture being taken. So bummer, but cool to have these bucks right behind my house. And again, here's that eight point that I got the shed to. You can see that whole area is illuminated even with as tiny of a camera as this is. The Spy Point Link Micro, a lot of bang for your buck. Up next is the Moultrie Delta, right around $100 price point. Has a 32 megapixel camera, HD video, a 0.35 second trigger speed, and an 80 foot infrared flash. This was one camera that I was really, really excited to test because the specs were the highest out of all of the other cameras, and it did perform well. Here again, you have the information bar, you have the moon phase, which you can't really see because I have it cut out. You have the temperature, date, and time. Here you have a Tom scooping up some of them honey locust pods down below. And even with all the brush and branches in front of the turkey, it's still very, very sharp. This was part of the testing grounds for this video. So I had tons and tons of cameras on a very small piece of property. But here you can see these does clear in focus, good picture quality. And then you have this coyote coming across the frame. He's moving, he's hunting. Very happy with the performance of this camera, especially right around the $100 mark. The nighttime pictures, apples to apples, weren't nearly as good as the daytime pictures, but they weren't bad. Again, especially at the $100 range. Here you have a buck and a doe. There's a little bit of blur it's not bad and then here's that one horn buck i'm just waiting for him to drop his other antler and lastly we have a group of does in a blizzard still relatively good picture quality at that price point can't expect much better than that so now we'll go to some of the video the daytime is good this was a foggy day but you can hear these does crunching the ice the audio is just really cool to have on these videos because you can see the demeanor you can hear what's going on in the video here's another example again this is my test zone so i had all sorts of cameras and my cameras were baited up just to make sure i got pictures of deer loads of them in there though not bad for a hundred dollar camera the nighttime video we have this buck cautiously checking out this area you can see a flash going off of the camera behind it but he makes his way down here and then here we have him the very next morning still dark same exact place still just as cautious looking around i know this buck made it through season so i'm really really excited to see him this next fall 
So again, there is audio on these videos, which is cool to hear what's going on. Sometimes there's deer walking behind the cameras chasing and you can't tell what's happening in the video. You might just think it was the wind blowing. With the audio, it definitely helps. This is the Stealth Cam Fusion X. It's $100, has a 26 megapixel camera, HD video, 0.4 second trigger speed, and an 80 foot infrared flash. The information bar at the bottom has time, date, temperature, moon phase, and you can custom name it. I tried to get both some pictures on a trail and some also more stationary. Overall, it's a very crisp photo, especially for a deer just walking by here. And this is a cool picture. You can definitely tell this buck has been rubbing. Nighttime pictures, not bad, not great. For the price point and everything else, I'm not too bummed out about it. Even the one that has a little blur, you can still tell how many tines this buck has, which one he is. And then here's two bucks. They're both walking. They're both crisp, sharp, in focus. And lastly, here you have a picture, there's tons of deer. It's not the best picture in the world, but it's clear enough to tell what the buck is, which is the most important thing to me. I did majorly drop the ball on the Stealth Cam Fusion X test because I accidentally deleted the SD card that had all the videos on that I tested. So unfortunately, you won't see those today. You'll just have to imagine, but I will say they were comparable to most of the other videos in this. Last and certainly not least is the Bushnell Cellucor 20. It's $110 has a 20 megapixel camera, HD video, sub one second trigger speed, and an 80 foot infrared flash. We will start with the daytime pictures. Again, at the bottom, you have temperature, moon phase, date, and time. I believe you can also custom name this one, but picture quality is pretty good. Nothing super spectacular. Pretty similar to some of the other ones in this price range. Nighttime, just like the rest of them, if they're moving, there's just a little bit of blur, but overall not bad. Here's a really nice buck that showed up at the end of December. Flash is pretty good. Again, this whole food plot area is relatively large and it does a pretty good job of illuminating the whole area. Now we'll get to the video daytime. Not bad. This was that buck again that I found the shed to, and I actually found it not too far from that area. This was the one camera that I did not have any audio on the videos, and I looked through the settings again multiple times to make sure it wasn't something on my end. So I'm not sure if it was just a fluke or if for some reason it just does not record video, but I definitely recommend running your trail cameras on video. It's cool just to see deer interact. You can see their demeanor and might give you some clues as to what bucks are more aggressive than others and maybe you'd be able to grunt or rattle them in if you did have an encounter. There was certainly certain bucks that were always aggressive every single time they came on camera. Overall Bushnell, very good performance, no complaints other than the size of the camera itself. Now that you've seen some of the pictures and videos for yourself, you can form your own opinion. But personally, I think the very best cell camera that's under $150 on the market today is Drum roll, please. The Tacticam Reveal XB, and I'll tell you why. This takes really sharp photos and videos. You can control all of the settings straight from the app. It has an invisible flash, so it's completely invisible to the deer. You don't have that faint red glow where all the deer snap their head up and look at your cameras, even if it's 10 feet up in a tree. And then lastly, one thing I didn't touch on earlier is that in the app, they actually have a Bluetooth setting so you can connect to your camera via Bluetooth, see what it's broadcasting on your phone so it can help aim exactly where you need this thing pointed and it has a line across to let you know exactly where you need centered in the camera frame. So that's a super helpful, especially if you hang your cameras high like I do a lot of times and you're trying to get the right angle to point down. Now, instead of guessing, you can look at the app, see exactly where this thing is pointed. Super nice feature. So again, the best overall cell camera under $150 is the Tacticam Reveal XB. Now for the best value cam, best bang for your buck, if I was brand new to cell cam, didn't have any, and I'm trying to build up an arsenal of these things, I would go with, drum roll please, the SpyPoint Link Micro. And I might catch some flack for this. There's a lot of SpyPoint haters out there because they were the first company to really come in and disrupt the cell cam market, come in at a way lower price point than all the other companies. So naturally there were some kinks to work out with their firmware. I don't have any issues with these things anymore like I did three years ago when they first came out. This thing is absolutely tiny. You could fit 15 of these things in your backpack compared to like some of these bigger cameras side by side. 
It's just a tiny camera. Battery life is ridiculous. I got some of these up in Michigan still that I put out this time last year, still sending me pictures every single day and they're sending me a lot of pictures. So it's not like it's at a remote place where it's not sending a lot. It's Python lock compatible so you can lock it straight to the tree, not get stolen. If you're looking to get cell cameras to run on public land, this is it right here. Five point link micro. It's not fancy, it's not sexy. It only boasts a 10 megapixel camera, which I would probably guess that all of these cameras are exaggerating how many megapixels they truly have. This thing right here, great value, great bang for your buck, right around 100 bucks. Overall, there really was no bad performing camera, but the ones I would think twice about before buying again is the Money Manifest. I just think there's better options out there. Wasn't a huge fan of it overall for a lot of different factors. And then some of these bigger ones, like the Bushnell camera, I think it performed well. Same thing with the Muddy. They're just, it's a large camera. It's a lot to pack that thing in. This one right here, the antenna does not bend or twist or turn or swivel. So to fit that in your backpack and go hike around all day is kind of a pain. Whereas a lot of the other cameras, even the muddy one, I mean, the antenna folds down. It just takes up less space in your pack. So if you go out there with four or five of those things in your backpack, you're hiking all day on public land trying to find places to run cell cameras. It's just kind of a pain to have those giant cameras. And, and that application, again, I would personally run those spy point link micros. I think they're awesome cameras. If I was going to build an arsenal for private land, I'd probably be looking at the Reveal X or the Reveal XB. Hopefully this video has helped navigate you through some of your questions. Make sure to give it a like if you're still watching at this point. And if you have additional questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer them all. Lastly, if you want real-time updates on what I'm doing to prepare for deer season, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Next Step Outdoors. I don't always have time to make full-length YouTube videos, but I always try to add as much value on there as possible. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next video.